Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. Dollar, Welcome back to another episode of Easy Dubs podcast uh, presented by Dub Club. Today we are doing an NBA Finals edition, talking a little Warriors Celtics um, with a great guest uh, at Klee Picks. Klee Picks on Twitter. Um, you know, he's the man from the Midwest. He's uh, straight out of Cleveland, as that shirt says. So, uh, Klee, how you doing? How are, we, uh, are you excited to be on? You know, yeah. we're excited to have you. No, great to be on. Thanks for having me. Um, honestly, it's, it's a little refreshing that I'm doing an interview that's not about Deshaun Watson right now. So, I'm fully happy to be talking about the NBA Finals and not my Cleveland Browns and whatever mess is going on with that. So, uh, again, happy to be on and let's, let's get rolling here. Are you sure you don't want to talk about Deshaun Watson? I mean, um, I prepped a bunch of questions. You know, he's I'm so sure involved in the NBA do right the now. Rest of Twitter does, but um, <laughs> I, I will, uh, I will pass for right now. And when something gets released in terms of a punishment, I'm sure I'll be happy to come back on it. So, <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Well, luckily we're talking basketball today. We don't need to talk one ounce of football. Um, and we're talking Warrior Celtics. It's it's so far it's been a pretty good series. A little bit back and forth, some blowouts, but um, you know I think you know, all of us fans are, are having a good time just seeing these crazy offenses go at it. And you know again these they're electric offenses, electric defenses. It's it's just going to be you know hopefully these next four games are are a little closer than the first three. But um, let's just start it off. I'd love to hear kind of where are you finding value so far? You know in this series. Um, obviously, this playoffs has probably presented a certain kind of trend for you. So into this series, yeah. you know, what are you looking for maybe moving forward? And what have you seen in the last few games? Yeah, so moving forward, I think there's a trend definitely going on with the series that if whoever wins the game is covering their end of the spread. And what I mean by that is if you look at the winning team for that game, whether it was Boston in game one or three or, or the, uh, the Warriors in game two, whatever their spread is, it's it's hitting. And so, um, for example, game four coming up here with the Celtics, the spread is four right now in favor of the Celtics. Um, the trend would be to take the Celtics minus four if you think they're going to win the game. Now, uh, if you think that the uh, Warriors are going to win, may as the dog, I would say take the Warriors on the money line. So that's, that's where you're kind of – you're differentiating. So – um, there's just a little more value in terms of your money back. Yes, they would cover the plus four in a win, but it's not falling in that three, two, or one range right now in any of the spreads. And actually, this trend's been going on uh, for the most part of the playoffs, too. So um, I'll be straightforward with the audience. You know, games one, two, and three, I'm two and one on plays, giving out to my VIPs. Games one and two, I was riding the over. Uh, there was a, a small little trend of, of Boston and road games and the trend of them going over in those games, obviously hitting game one. And then they decided that they were consent on getting one game in, in uh, San Francisco now, not Oakland. I want to say Oakland for my, my Cavs Warriors uh, years. Uh, but um, <clears throat> with that said, uh, and then last night I, I went with the, the Celtics money line uh, for a single fact. I want to see if that trend was still going through. And obviously, it did hit again. So going forward in the series, whoever I feel is going to win the game, that's basically what I'm going to do. If I think it's going to be the dog, I'm just going to take the, the take the money line. Or if uh, game four, um, spoiler alert, if I think the Celtics are going to win game four, I'm just going to take them the minus four then. So um, the money line last night was under a minus 150. It was at minus 145. That's kind of my threshold in terms of juice given out. And so I went with that at minus 145. And Sure enough, that was an easy breezy fourth quarter again, which uh, I'm sure we'll talk about those 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 blowouts uh, throughout the playoffs yeah. that uh, that made it a sweat free minus those third quarter for the Warriors game. Yeah, well, no, exactly. We yeah, we got the third quarter. You know, it seems like right out out of the half, Steve Kerr gets him going a little bit, and then I don't know. It seems to trend downwards once it gets into the fourth, whatever it is, but. Um, I guess one of the questions I wanted to ask you just, just while we're kind of, I know you mentioned it a little bit kind of, um, as you're talking about home and road splits, I think it's, it's a good place to start because, 
Um, you know, home and road is, especially right now, it's, I mean, we saw some of the comments after the game and just how crazy these fans are getting. So um, how much are you kind of placing on home and road splits and, and are you putting a lot of, you know, value into, you know, are they affecting the way that you're betting these games or is it more just kind of, you're seeing these trends and you're just rolling with that instead? I, re- I truthfully, I'm going more with the trends. Um, I really, I mean, you're going to have an environment wherever you go, you're professional basketball players. So yes, obviously role players seem to play better. Um, if you like betting props, I guess is a good way to look at it. If you bet props and you like those role player point PARs or, you know, assists, whatever, um, or th- I've seen a lot of people going with those three point props, especially uh, with the way basketball is played now. Uh, I would tend to go with the home team role players in those situations. I guess is what I say. Um, I would shy away from road team role players like a Jordan Poole saying in game four or. Um, even look at, you know, Andrew Wiggins last night compared to games one and two, um, you know, that that's, you know, those, those type of players. Yes. You're going to get your Steph Curry's getting 31 and, you know, Clay looked great last night, you know, getting his and, uh, you know, smart and Tatum and Brown getting theirs. But if you're looking for those value role player um, props, I guess a good way is, is, is using that home and away uh, mechanism to gauge what you're going to do. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think it's really important. I mean, I think the role players really, it, it factors in more with them, right? Like, just as you said, you know, Steph's going to get his because that's what he does. And he's, it doesn't matter where he is. Same with Jason Tatum. It's like, even if he doesn't have a good night, he's still going to drop whatever it is, 20, 25, 30, just based on how many shots he's putting up. Sure but with these role guys, you know, they get hot in that environment and, you know, the crowd gets behind him. And sometimes you see a little bit more of that, you know, the high outputs, you know, again, from that, from a Horford or a Derek White or a Jordan Poole kind of thing. Um, one of the things you hit on earlier too was was this whole third quarter Warriors, you know, uh, fourth quarter maybe they're not as good what's so where are you kind of where are you putting your bets in terms of you know are you finding value in that third quarter do you think you know are books kind of mismanaging that or you you know are you trying to stay away from from betting on individual quarters no no i definitely have been riding personally uh the third quarter bet uh myself i mean it's it's crazy how good the the warriors have been not only this series but just third quarters throughout. I mean, I feel like they've been doing it since the start of the 2015 season, really. Um, I remember those Cavs series even going way back. They, you had to make sure you had a lead at halftime or that third quarter, it was going to be gone and you're going to be trailing going in the fourth. So, um, yeah, I, I think that going forward, I'm going to still keep playing it. I would recommend the audience to still keep playing the Warriors or the money line. I just looked while you were asking that question to see what it was at. They got the Warriors as a dog right now in a, th- in a third quarter spread on, on Bavada. So it's like, I don't understand when you have such a large differential of the third quarter. And, and that's a prop to Steve Kerr and the way he manages and makes adjustments at halftime. And not taking anything away from the Celtics. It's just, he just knows how to get his team back into games and, you know, ready to you know, go that second half where maybe, you know, the Celtics or, you know, previous series, those other teams haven't been able to. And I think going forward, if they're going to keep mismanaging that line going in the fourth quarter or going in the third quarter, I would just keep having, I would take it, you know, up to three points if they finally make an adjustment, <coughs> excuse me, uh, of, of that line, I would take it up to three. Truthfully. I mean, as I said, right now, it's plus a half point, for the Warriors, you know, tomorrow night right now. So yeah. um, this is Thursday at 8, 10 Eastern on the East Coast. So it's like, you know, like, I don't understand why they keep doing it that way. It seems like we've we've seen enough of a pattern where maybe that, exactly. you know, bookmakers would change it. Aren't they supposed to be the smart ones? Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I guess not. I mean, I'm not complaining because it's, it's money won, but like, Man, like if you're gonna keep doing that, and like there's another prop out there right now, the biggest leading games, it keeps falling at like 16 and a half, 17, somewhere around there. And we talked a little bit before about the blowouts that have happened throughout these playoffs. Like 
if that's going to keep occurring again, that's something that you individually can keep betting on. And sure enough, we'll keep hitting. I mean, last night, I think memory serves you right. The Celtics had about an 18, 19 point lead in that second quarter. I mean, they were up 16 in the fourth, you know, it keeps falling in that area. I mean, we saw, you know, Warriors up, you know, big in games one and two. Again, I don't understand why they keep making it as low as it is. Obviously, maybe in the past, but if you look at these playoffs and the patterns that are keep happening throughout these playoffs, and I'm not even talking the NBA final, I'm talking the whole damn thing, excuse my language. Um, it, it's, 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 you know, it's hitting, and it's hitting at a very, very high rate. Uh, so I'm not sure if your books have it. Some do, some don't. It's going to be in your props section, game props, and it's highest lead in game. And it's been 16 and a half or 17 and a half, depending on what book you look at. And, you know, I would play the over for sure. Yeah. Well, and I think that's kind of fun. You know, when, when we're looking, you know, from a casual betting, you know, betting perspective, you're looking at maybe, you know, money line, totals, whatever it is, spread. But there are a lot of, there's so much value in these things where, where bookmakers maybe just aren't changing up as much as they should be. Um, so, you know, finding that 16 and a half or 17 and a half that is consistently hitting over multiple rounds yeah. with teams that are, I mean, these are the best teams in the world. And so we're, si- we're seeing this volatility of, you know, some of their players and the three point shooting really come exactly. into play. Yeah. You hit it right on the head. You, 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 you hit the point I was about to make. It's because of the, the way the style of the game is now where you have such a high three point shooting and high three point making as well especially when you're talking about Golden State and, and uh, you know, the way Steph and Clay and all them can hit it, Jordan Poole being another one. Um, and then, you know, Boston's not too shabby on the other side. Uh, it's not as, I guess, beautiful to watch, but it's more pick and roll and, and stuff in that nature and, uh, you know, screen and pop. But, you know, it, but the thing is, they're getting right back in the games because of their ability to shoot it the, the other way. So it's like, um, again, I get, I wish the games were a little more competitive. Don't get me wrong. I, I wish every game was a, a, a one to a classic in the fourth quarter. Obviously they haven't been, but, um, you know, going forward, maybe we'll start getting those, but I wouldn't put it out of the question for a big lead to be have had during a game, these final possible four, maybe two. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, it seems like why wouldn't we continue to see this trend? These teams are so – I find them to be – I mean, just watching them, they seem so evenly matched in terms of they're both really good on defense, but they're also – they're really aggressive on defense. Yeah. And so that – and same on offense, right? They're – when – when I think that when the Celtics, you know, turn the ball over more than 16 times, they're like 0-5 in the playoffs or something, and otherwise they're, you know, 13-3. and I, It was some number like that, but – it's it's like we're seeing so much aggressiveness. I mean, if you just watch Draymond play too, it's like it seems like he's fouling someone every single play of the game. And well, yet, he, you know, he's in the WWE, and you know, he thinks he can get away with whatever he wants out there. And I, I mean, that's another factor I'm thinking of this. If the the whistle's going like it was last night, you know, Draymond is limited because you know he fouled out. What was his line? Two, four, and three, or something like that. Like. If you have a tight whistle in game four, five, six, and maybe, you know, six and seven, I think the same thing could happen. If it's like game two where he's allowed to do whatever he wants, you know, I would tend to think that he would have a better game. Like, it's, it's, it's not rocket science to see what's going on out there. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and you know, maybe it's just that he seems like the one guy, right, where he's playing so out, he's trying to play like outside of his limits and he's playing so aggressive. And I, I haven't seen the same thing from the Celtics. Like they're, they're really aggressive, but they're just, they're, they're doing it in a more fundamental way where, you know, they're setting up Robert Williams to block a bunch of shots and they've got Jalen Brown playing just awesome defense on some of these guys, but it's in a way that's not leading to six fouls like we're seeing with Draymond. It's a very um, clean, so it's aggressive just, style, I guess is the way to say it. Yeah, no, it's just, it's really well coached or whatever it is, whatever Ime Odoka has done, it's like he's completely switched this culture and made it so, you know, they're playing just fundamental basketball and it just looks, it's just impressive to watch. Um, yeah. And that's coming from a Warriors fan, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 impressive to watch. I mean, we saw it, 
obviously in the Buck series and then uh, with the way they basically made Giannis give up towards the end of that series. Not to say give up, but like just wore him down. And yeah, it's just, all right, we're going to keep throwing bodies at you. We're going to be physical, but we're not going to foul. And then we saw it in the Eastern Conference Finals. Like you saw Jimmy Butler at the end of Game 7. He was just exhausted. Like, it was it was the same thing with they figure out how to be in a clean fashion that way. Um, has it had its toll yet on this series? I don't know. Yes, Steph's a little banged up now. Uh, Clay and Draymond are clearly frustrated by, I guess, the fans and – the chance they're making, but like that all goes into it though. Like, it's like the environment you're playing, you got a man, you know, on you, no matter where you're going, they're physical. And you know, it's, it's very impressive out of, out of what I'm seeing out of Boston. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I I feel like we're watching a team. I I mean, I just remember a couple of years back when, when we were playing the Raptors and it just felt like they were just wearing us down. There was just, you know, we had Fred Van Vliet just just eating Steph alive and just these different ways to get, you know, put so much pressure on Steph where he's having to play like a hero. I mean, he's literally, I mean, some of the shots he's hitting are crazy. And so, you know, I wonder, here's another good question. You know, I wonder how much does this injury, I know it's not anything major. He's supposed to be healthy for game four, but, um, you know, are you putting that into play when you're, when you're kind of, when you're building, you know, when you're putting together some bets, are you thinking about Steph's injury at all? Or, um, you know, is that, is that even weighing into it right now? I think I know, I'm not going to say it's totally weighing on my opinion on who I'm taking. I think I'm taking who I feel is the better team right now in this series. But at the same time though, I'm, I'm totally think he's not a hundred percent and that's, that's going to play into factors throughout this these last possible, as I said, possible four games, but for sure too. Um, I think that, you know, the way he plays, it's a lot of movement. It's a lot of off ball. And if it is, an, they said it was an ankle or f- knee or foot. I think it was like, yeah, I well, think it was yeah, ankle or foot. It was something down, down there. Weird foot. Yeah. 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 I mean, that, that does affect things, you know, um, I'm not going to say it's going to, Totally, he's going to miss, you know, two of 21 from the field. No, I'm not going to say that. But I think it's going to wreck a little bit of the flow he may be in. Now, I mean, obviously, this is the NBA. We know they can do things to make it feel good, as we know. Um, (laughs) How many times have we seen players leave games and pop right back in, you know, two minutes? I mean, how heck we saw with, you know, the, the Celtics with, Tatum and the shoulder and, you know, smart with his ankle in the, in the Eastern Conference Finals. They look like they're done, and it's like, oh, we're back in the game perfectly fine nailing three-pointers. So yeah. I'm sure the medical staff for, for the uh, Golden State Warriors will be perfectly, you know, up to what they need to do. I'm just more saying seeing him off the ball, going off screens like he usually does, I think that's where it's going to um, bother him a bit. So – but yeah. to the point of that's how I'm going to handicap the game to answer your first question. No, no. Well, you know, and, and I think that's, that's an interesting way to look at it. I mean, the right, what you talked about a little bit earlier when you're talking about Giannis and Jimmy and just how, how devastating the Celtics were shutting them down and just, or not even sh- not shutting them down. They didn't shut them down, but they just wearing them out. Right. And so if we're already seeing Steph start to get worn out and it's game three, yeah. you know, especially with clay, I mean, he had a great game three, but it's been a little bit of a struggle the last few, the last few series. And Jordan Poole definitely does not look like himself right now. Um, and some of the other role players just aren't maybe stepping up as much as, as much as we'd like. So, you know, when you're looking at a guy like Steph playing against this, this team, that's, I mean, they're, they're built to guard him, right? I mean, well, I mean if you Marcus look, Smart but, is, is a hound. Off, but like, if you look back to last night in game three, you know, they got the lead by one. They take them out, and then all of a sudden, it's right back to the Celtics' control. Like, obviously, he's the best shooter we've seen probably since Bird. If you want to say all time, that's up to you and another debate. But I mean, he's no. I mean, just being serious here. Like, that's you know, that's a very nope. debatable thing, and I I will take both sides of that argument. But um, the fact of him having to sit and the offense of the Warriors just being non-existent 
through that stretch. I mean, what he was out and then came back in. What was it, an 11-point game by the time he came back in the fourth quarter? Like, I mean, it's just completely You flipped. can't have that. You I mean, you really can't. Yeah. That's 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 where the guys like Clay, like Draymond, you know, obviously Poole, who, we, you know, we said before, hasn't shown up the series that much. They have to step up in that area. I mean, it reminds me a lot of, like, LeBron's first time in Cleveland when he'd go out and it's like, oh, we got to rely on Mo Williams and Larry Hughes to, you know, get a- <laughs> Larry Hughes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. That's not happening right now. Like, okay, we <laughs> get it. Like, <laughs> but, like, the same things here, you know. I'm not saying that they're – that Clay and Draymond are not great players. They should be. But the fact is there's a definite drop-off right now, even with as good as Clay was in game three – to when Steph's out in those big money minutes in the second half. Yeah, he just he just opens the floor up so much and he he runs the offense with such, you know, it's it's all focused on him. There's so many eyes on him. And like I said earlier, you know, when I was saying Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown are guys that are hounding him. And, you know, we're not seeing that same split, I feel like, with the Celtics. You know, it's almost like it's almost reverse splits. I think yeah. Jason Tatum in game two had was like what, minus thirty six or something? And, you know, the rest of the team is they're they're just there for for right now, at least in this finals, they're showing that they're built a little bit more completely um, than the Warriors team is. And that, I thought that was the biggest strong point of the Warriors was how deep they are. Um, yet we're seeing it's kind of going the opposite yeah, way. In, in this it's series. funny because, you know, I was watching last night's game and, you know, Mark Jackson saying in the fourth quarter, you know, the offense has got to go through Tatum. It's got to get Tatum's got to catch us. I'm thinking to myself. Not really, man. Like, Brown's getting his. Smart's getting his. Like, yeah, eventually, you know, he was doing those driving kicks. But, like, up to that point, I'm like, look, you're, you're as you said before, you know, Smart was, was taking over. Brown was phenomenal. And I think, you know, I would put some money on him if you're looking for an MVP that's not in the minus category right now. I would definitely look at, at Jalen Brown as your MVP of the series because personally, I think he's been the best player in the court, um, <clears throat> especially last night. Uh, but you know, I, I, you you hit it right on the head. Like you're not getting that drop off from from when Tatum's out of the game, the quote quote bona fide star for them, and that's I think that's been the biggest difference. I mean, look at game I, one. Honestly, Al, yeah, Big Al Horford is is looking you know, back in his prime, like, <laughs> which was unreal to watch. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. I can't watch it. I hate it. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like, I'm like screaming at the TV, like, who is Al Horvath and yeah. where is he, how, where does he come from, you know? It's Talk been years since he was good, it feels way. like. Some bad beats. Al Horvath's point prop last night was 11, and he sat on 11 from the third quarter out. Oh, oh, good. Nice. <laughs> so I think wow. so any, any happier. It, you bet Al Horford over 11 and a half points last night in game three. I feel for you a little bit. I think that does actually make me happier because <laughs> I didn't. I don't want him to do well, and I don't like seeing him do well because he frustrates the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's just it's 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 been a it's been a pretty frustrating. I think from a Warriors fan perspective, you know, it feels like we should be we should be up two one right now. If you know, I think last game was really the the outlier where obviously third quarter we came back, but. It just never felt like we were really in it that much, especially the way that Draymond was playing. And, you know, we were just – the only way we could get back in it was, you know, Steph and Clay doing Steph and Clay things, and and there's not a lot else going on. You know, it seems – we got even lucky with that, with the seven-point play that we hit. You know, that completely boosted us back into the game. And then, like you said earlier, Steph goes out, and that seven-point, you know, that seven-point lead – no, gain goes right back. Yeah. You know, it goes right back to the Celtics. So it is pretty frustrating, and but it's it's there's a lot going on, and and these Celtics look as good as I've seen a team play the Warriors. Yeah, no, uh, the uh, they've they've definitely they they've been very impressive, you know. And you know what was it a one point game in halftime in game two? Obviously, we talked about the third quarter barrage that the, the Warriors have had, but. Um, to be able to come back like they did in game one and then do what they did last night, they took the Warriors' best punch in that third quarter. And instead of folding like they did in game two, they just said, okay, we'll just come right back with our own and 
sure enough, it was, you know, a 16 point game in the fourth quarter at one point. So that's been very impressive to see and watch. Um, you know, truthfully, I think they're the better team right now. I'm not going to say they're the better individual players, but as we just talked about, you know, a couple minutes ago, when the players like Smart and Brown and Horford, I know Horford, as I said, didn't have the greatest game last night, like game one, but when those guys are contributing like they are, like Jason Tatum, who just, as I've said before, because of sure volume, can get his 25 and, you know, six and five, um, that's that's tough to match up against. And you need to be, you need that third component right now with, with the Warriors. And that's what's missing in those two games. You know, Draymond was very good in game two. Again, was he allowed to do a lot of things that were out of the norm in a basketball basketball sense? A little bit, but um, but last night, you know, two points, two rebounds, three assists, or whatever it was. Like, you can't have that if you're if you're a Warriors fan and a Warriors better if you want to win those bets and games. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, well, you know what? I don't want to keep you for too long. I want to get your just final thoughts. Um, my last question, who's going to win the series? Yeah. It sounds like it's probably going to be the Celtics, or at least I think you're going to think so. Uh, and who's, I mean, we already gave a little bit of a sneak peek of Jalen Brown could be a good value bet for MVP, but do you think, he, you know, that's going to be the, the end all? Do you think that he's going to end up kind of taking that trophy? I think, uh, you know, in terms of the series itself, I think Celtics in six is probably the most likely option. Again, I've already said, I'm going with the Celtics minus the four tomorrow night in game three, or game four, excuse me, on Friday night. And again, I think this the better team. I think they're playing better. I think they're tougher. I think they play in better defense. Um, I hope it's a little closer in terms of a fan standpoint, but at the same time, though, the beginning of the blowout, like I'm perfectly okay at that with the minus four. I think the Warriors, having the team that they have, you know, will have some pride at home, and, and we'll get the job done in game five, but I think they close it out in six in Boston. Um, that's going to be a madhouse, and, you know, good luck to that. Um, in terms of the MVP, if the Celtics come, or the, if the Warriors come back in this series, I think it's sure it would probably be Steph, and there's really no value to be. in there. Um, again, I, I would put money on on Jalen Brown right now as, as – uh, let me try to pull it up here real quick for you. I know that he wasn't the betting favorite as of this morning. Um, and that was, that was Jason Tatum. Um, yeah. You got to believe that he's still probably the yeah. betting favorite just based on how many, you know, how many shots he takes and just the, the notoriety exactly. right now. So, you know, in terms of that, I, I, I would say, um, you know, if you're looking for a plus value, definitely, Jalen Brown would be the guy, the go-to, because I don't think there's much going to be much drop-off in terms of his lines um, going yeah. forward. Um, and then you contribute the fact of his defense, and he's had those he's had those bigger moments too, like last night the shot block on on uh, Clay. You know those things for some reason stick in the mind of voters for the MVP. So it's um, it's the moments, right? Yeah, it's the moments. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So again, I, I would I would put some money on, on Jalen Brown, even Marcus Smart. I, I don't think I don't think Al Horford's going to win it anymore. He had one good game and he hasn't <laughs> shown up since. But Marcus has had solid stat lines throughout these playoffs. So if you're looking for someone outside of Jason Tatum, who's at a minus one twenty five right now, I would definitely go with with Smart or Brown. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I wouldn't do anything crazy with it. I mean, I, mean, I call it a pizza money bet where. You know, if you win, you, you get a nice little value back. But if you lose, you're losing what you'd pay on a, on a, on a you know, nice little 12-inch eight cut, you know? <laughs> yeah, just a couple bucks. Just a, it's just a sprinkle bet, right? Exactly. It's just something to have a little bit of not fun. Full, and, you know, not a full unit bet play. No, well, no that's a better way no. to say it. Yeah, yeah. I well, I think that was – yeah, quarter unit. There you yeah, go. There yeah, you keep, go. It, keep it nice and light. Keep it nice and light. Yeah. Um, well, that was, that was really fun. Khalid. I, I loved having you on. I think we gave the audience a lot to think about when it comes to the rest of the series. Yeah. I think we're all seeing a lot of the same things though. I think this, this pattern of, you know, maybe the Celtics team is a little bit better than, yeah. you know, these Warriors players, which 
um, you know, we've seen has been a little bit of an issue in the past. And I think, you know, 20, what was it, 2019 was kind of a good representation of, you know, the team and, you know, Kawhi and the team built around Kawhi maybe taking over and, and beating Steph and Clay down a little bit too much. Um, and maybe, you know, again, these guys are getting older. These guys are, they're probably just a little bit more tired. I don't know. Clay in his first year back, it just, it, you know, it doesn't seem like it's clicking at the end of the year. So obviously as a Warriors fan, I'm hoping we, we maybe can sneak a couple more games out, make this a real series and not go down, you know, in a heap of nothingness. I don't know. It's just hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to feel, it's hard to feel good right now. I'm, I'm trying to hold it in, <laughs> but, uh, don't you know, cry. again, thank Yeah, exactly. Uh, I will try not to. Thank you so much for for coming on, Klee. This was this was awesome. Um, again, audience, you can find him on Twitter at Klee Picks. Um, he's a huge part of our Dub Club community, and yeah. um, we love having him with us these days. And and uh, I'll definitely be having you on a little bit closer to football season. Yeah. And once we get a little bit more, especially once a verdict comes out on on uh, on the unmentionable, <laughs> you know, we can we can talk a little bit later about that. But yeah. Um, Thank you. And any last thoughts or? Yeah, no, um, some dub club stuff, you know, I, I love what, what the product they offer. And, you know, I, I just recently starting uh, on Wednesday, I have a free play that I, I offer on there as too. So if you're wanting to test me out a little bit, see how it goes with, with plays, there is a free option right now to have it uh, text or emailed or telegram to you um, comes the write up as well. So um, it's a nice little, Nice little option outside of the VIP stuff as well. So it comes right off my Beautiful. VIP card too, the one the, the play. So it's not like you're getting some random play that I'm choosing. No, it's something that I feel confident you're gonna win. Not the pizza play. No, <laughs> no. Not These the are one play. Well, Clee, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Full unit. We love it. We love it. Well, thank you so much, and um, hope you guys like this episode. I I know I had a great time, and sounds Same like Clee enjoyed it too. Thanks yeah. for having me on, man. Of course.